Good day, everybody. Welcome to Larissa Studio. Um, about to do a Dutch technique. Um, what I just showed you before I start talking is uh, just a new pigment paste uh, called the Tree Frog Green. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm using a molten gold, a bit of royal purple, and uh, a bit of peacock powder. And uh, angel white of course so just working on a timber board I've already mixed my my resin and I'm about to start mixing the pigments the Dutch pour I had to laugh because um, it, it's it's all over you know the groups now and all over um, YouTube and I was just thinking um, it's nice to name these things but the Dutch pour is actually has been used for a long, long time. I'm pretty sure I saw Anne Marie uh, Ritterhoff use it as well in one of her acrylic pours. Um, so I just thought I will do it with resin. It's nothing new. It's been used before, like I said, but it's it's fun, fun to do something else. It's much easier to do it with resin. We're sorry, my apologies, with uh, acrylic paints. So resin is a little bit harder because the pigments tend to kind of sink and um, it's a little bit harder to kind of blow that white over and then blow it back over the, the white. So see how I go with it. And um, just mixing the pigments now mixing the molten gold molten gold is absolutely an amazing pigment and uh, you can only use it in in resin because it's formulated to be only used in resin epoxy resins and this is the peacock green and just showing it to you powder mixed with resin and it looks gorgeous and then the tree frog green they're quite transparent very very pretty pretty green not really into greens but mix you know if you use it with um with certain colors it it, it does um stand out and looks good in this piece it's it's going to be lost a little bit because it gets just overwhelmed with all the the other strong pigments I believe this one is the royal purple that I'm mixing. Another very pretty pearlescent um, pigment. All the res, of course. Uh, and I have that white as well, which is going to be the star in this piece. So here we go. Just um, pouring some of that white. and covering part of the area not worried about covering the whole area because I've got a different way that I want to do this Dutch pour I'm not going from the center out so I'm only covering a half of the board with my white and um, I realized that I needed some more so I just mixed a little bit more to you know to have a sufficient amount of it for this piece and of course using my fingers to just spread it around a little bit the board is a little bit warped, just a tiny little bit, but it's enough to start dripping on the side a bit, which is kind of annoying sometimes, but not to worry, I managed to use up all of those drips and create a really nice sculpture out of the drips. It's uh, brilliant, brilliant. And I got that idea from Sue Finley, and it um, works well amazing just adding some clear 
on the the other part of the board and mixing it a little bit with that white and you can see the different shade where that white looks a bit watered down and it doesn't um, concern me at this stage because I'll, I'm going to be pouring colors on, on that part of it looking at it now and thinking I should have added more white and I, I think I should have just covered the whole area in white um, didn't do that <laughs> but it, it worked out okay and you will see so some of that green coming up now just going across that's all I am doing going across now, I've used too much of the the pigment the colored pigment way too much I should have done with much much less just some gold over that green you're alternating the transparent pigments with the opaque ones to create those um, cells if you want cells that's what you do if you're using too many of the transparents you won't get it but if you alternate both transparent and the opaques you will definitely get it and you can see I've got a lot of a lot of pigment there it's just way too much so I can already see that I've buggered that up but um, it's all good never worry too much about it just adding some more white around there and adding some more white onto my white areas a different way to do uh, a Dutch technique I suppose and I haven't done this in a long time last time I did this was with the acrylic paints so at this stage I have no idea um, what's going to happen got the trusty hair dryer out and just warming up the pigments a little bit and then start to to blow the white over the pigments and you can see already that they are kind of mixing too much and then blowing over the white again and the force is just too powerful too powerful for this painting the 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 effects were amazing because you know with resin when you leave it you just leave it for a little bit and then you just watch things happen so um, that's uh, pretty much what happens now I'm thinking wow well, I buggered this one up <laughs> let's try something else I'm trying to show something here to people tell them how I know everything about well not everything but I know about the Dutch Dutch technique and you know let's see how I do it but didn't work so I decided to add more white and what do you get double Dutch technique that's what I got <laughs> oh, I've got to laugh at myself um, because I start off so confident and then you know it's just like the universe watching you and saying okay I'm gonna make sure you don't succeed in this one so anywho so I'm going with that white again over those pigments and now I'm starting to see some really really cool effects just uh, opening up and developing developing right in front of my eyes and um, adding more of the pigments just up from high from a height and uh, you know just because I wanted that first pigment which was a peacock I wanted it to push right down into the center through that white and then blow some more looks pretty cool um, at this stage just um, probably can't see it properly from you know this kind of distance um, 
closer down you can see some really cool effects so I decided to just uh, tweak it a little bit and add some more of the, the green and um, you know add some more interest because I'm never happy with just a pour I always have to add a little bit uh, more interesting things um, different contrasting um, effects so that's what I'm doing now just pretty much adding more of whatever I've got left in the cups and and creating a little bit of depth through there and adding that gold onto the white I just really love the gold and the white uh, combination because it just looks really pretty together so I know what you're thinking it looks like a mess now but don't worry about it I always fix things and I think that's what I'm good at I'm not uh, your the resin artist per se where you just pour and it looks perfect that's not me I'm originally a traditional artist and I love to paint I love to add things to to my piece I, I step back I look at it and I see what can I do what tools can I use uh, at this um, stage I'm using the um, heat gun as my tool to move things back and forth from one side to the other zigzagging it kind of and seeing what it does and it, it does it creates some really amazing things and even though oh look at that see how that green just pops it just needed that it needed a little bit of help because it's it's hiding underneath all that pigment it was just way too much of it there so it's starting to look really interesting and really cool now all that purple and and the peacock together created a really pretty pretty purple uh, like a deep deep purple and and that white and the, and the gold it's just um, that's what you do you don't have to just give up and say oh it didn't work I'll do another layer just keep do as much as you can do with 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 what you've got and if it doesn't work out then you can put another layer on it or on part of it that's what I do and that's what a lot of artists do and you'll find that the traditional artists are very rarely the ones who will just pour and leave it there they will always add other things to it try and draw something on it because um, that's just what we do and looking at balance adding bits and pieces little lines pulling those lines just with a stick to to create something else in there because I'm constantly looking at the whole picture and seeing what I need to do and opening up some of the cells wherever I feel that they look good and I want to open open them up more that's why I do and now I'm just tilting because once again if you don't like a part of it you can just tilt as long as you're watching the rest of the painting and seeing how it stretches and um, how it's affecting it so then you stop that's just um, how it goes and I wanted to get rid of some of the, the bottom of that uh, one side of it and um, and stretch some of that gold and that white just uh, going around and you know, fixing things adding things some of the things that you know I suppose people want to know exactly what what you're doing because I could have cut it here and you don't have to watch the rest of it just see the the end piece but these little little uh, lines that I've added see how that opened up that purple it, they really add something to it to the piece so you need to see it all good thing about resin is that 
you know that sometimes it may look like crap but when you leave it and it does its own thing it just looks amazing afterwards and over here I just felt that it needed something so I'm just adding little drops of just clear resin and it just sinks down and opens up those areas just creating more interest more dimension I suppose and if I had time if resin would let me I would play with these pieces for hours but as you know there's only a certain amount of time that you have to play with it so you got to stop at some stage and using the hairdryer again on a very low to just open up that part there which works really well if you have cells there and you want to kind of open them up a bit more and make them, make them look bigger so I've pretty much used up everything I've got just scraping little bits and pieces and uh, I'm trying to fix things and um, I think that's pretty much it of um, oh yeah adding so adding some more pigments and putting them into those little clear drops of, of sorry clear resin and helping them to open up some more and just create more uh, interesting uh, depth and heat guns coming up I used a lot of heat on this on this painting um, it's only cause this type of resin which is the mad artist resin it's it's really resilient and you can use the torch and the heat gun on it for a long time um, other other resins that I've used don't allow that They'll, actually the resin will burn and you'll muck up the whole painting which is a bugger but uh, I know this resin and I know that I can do this just going around gently and just warming it up um, I do that you know even an hour and a half two hours after I've finished just to go and warm it up firstly uh, and then adding some extra heat to it very very quickly you don't you don't mess around with it once it's you know starting to set so so that's it I I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video I certainly enjoyed creating it and uh, let me know what you think about it there'll be some photos coming up shortly that you can see and I will be doing the second layer of uh, on this painting um, and uploading it very shortly so uh, keep an eye open on that too because I actually didn't stop I kept uh, mucking around with it and I didn't like part of the painting so I decided to go ahead and do another layer on it so and that one turned out real nice so Keep an eye on that. Alrighty, so I will leave you now. Love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please like, subscribe, subscribe and um, give me the thumbs up if you're new. And uh, if you're old, leave me a comment. Bye for now.